Now we know that we can't copy quantum states, but at least we can transfer and exchange them. By exchange, I mean this procedure that we mentioned in the previous video. Let's suppose that one quantum particle, which is the upper on this scheme, carries the state phi, while the other particle, the lower one, carries the state psi. And we want to design an algorithm which transfers state psi to the upper particle and state phi to the lower particle. This procedure is called swap, and it must be implemented by some unitary transform u. But before we design this transform, we first must agree about the notation. When we have several particles, each carrying one qubit, then mathematically the state of the system containing all these particles is the tensor product of all the qubits carried by them. One qubit is a two-dimensional vector, two qubits are described by a four-dimensional vector, three qubits by an eight-dimensional vector, etc. However, we must remember that tensor product is not commutative. This means that the order in which we place qubits in this product matters. Once we choose some order, we must retain it during the whole reasoning or computation. So the first thing, thing we do, we enumerate the considered particles. The state of the first particle we write down first, then on the right of it we write the state of the second particle, then third, etc. For example, this state describes five qubit carried by five two-level quantum systems. The first qubit in the state zero, the second and the third are in the state one, the fourth is in the state zero again, and the fifth is in the state one. The dimensionality of this vector is 2 in the power of 5, which is 32. And for classical computation, we can read the state as a number, encoded in the binary numeral system. It is number 13. This state also describes 5 qubits, but now the state of the second particle is a superposition of 0 and 1. The coefficient of this superposition 1 divide, uh, divided by square root of 2 is a scalar, so we can move it to the beginning of the whole expression. Now, this state does not encode any classical binary number for us because of this superposition of the second place. But when we measure this state in the 0, 1 basis, the superposition will collapse and we will obtain a vector which encodes a binary number. Okay. Now when we agree how we write down the qubits carried by enumerated particles, it is time to arrange the way we will describe quantum algorithms. We remember that quantum algorithm is a set of unitary operators applied to the state. On the previous week, we considered several examples of unitary operators, x, y, z, and h, which are one qubit gates, and c0, which is a two qubit gate. We may want to apply this one by, uh, and two qubit gates to the separate qubits in our multi-qubit state. So we need a way of describing what operators we want to apply in which qubits, to which qubits, and which in which order. And here is the very straightforward way to do this. We are going to describe the algorithms as two-dimensional schemes or tables. Here, in the first column, we write down the input state, qubit by qubit. The state of the first particle is on the top, the state of the second particle lower under it, and the third particle lower, etc. So the qubit which we write leftmost in the state description is the top, topmost qubit on the scheme. Then, from left to right, we are going to place the operators, or quantum gates, which we are going to apply to the corresponding qubits. Each column here corresponds to a step in our algorithm, and the row where we write down the gate corresponds to the qubit.
to which this gate is applied. Here, for example, we have this algorithm. On the first step, we apply Adamar gates to all five qubits. Then, on the second step, we apply X gate to the qubit number two and Z gate to the qubit number five. It is all pretty clear and straightforward for one qubit gates. But we can't compute much with them. To make quantum computing universal, we need two qubit gates, such as controlled NOT or controlled X. As you probably remember, C0 acts on two qubits. One of them is con control and the other controlled. The controlled qubit flips its state when the control qubit is in the state 1. So for our schemes, we will denote the control qubit by this thick dot, while the controlled qubit with X gate. And we are going to connect the dot and the X gate with the line for better clarity. So this notation means that the gate X is applied to qubit number 3 if qubit number 1 is in the state 1. And on this scheme, the gate X is applied to qubit 2 if qubit number 4 is in the state 1. And this scheme describes a very similar operation. But the gate here is not C0 or Cx, but Cz or controlled Z. So the gate Z is applied to the qubit 3 if qubit 1 is in the state 1. Actually, we can construct this kind of controlled gate from any one qubit gate. But this is not what we are going to discuss here. Here we wanted to discuss the quantum swap operator, which you can see on this slide. The algorithm which implements swapping of two qubits consists of these three sequential C nodes. If you were passing my other course, the introduction to quantum computing, I would probably ask you to design this algorithm yourselves, but here on the simplified course, I ask you only to check if this algorithm really works. To do this, you only need to check what it does with four basis states, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Good. Now you see that this algorithm acts as identity for the states 0, 0, and 1, 1, and swaps the states 0, 1, and 1, 0. It is exactly what we expect from the swap operator. It exchanges the states when they are different and does nothing when they are similar. And the matrix of this operator is this. Again, you can see that it does not touch the first and the last basis vector, which are 0, 0, and 1, 1, and it changes the places of the second and the third vectors, which are 0, 1, and 1, 0. Congratulations! You have just learned and analyzed your first quantum algorithm.